Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Today I got Paul and Tish with Freedom Vessel on the channel today. They're all the way from San Diego, California, and they have a business that specializes in building, renovating, and restoring campers to travel with their family. Today they're traveling in New Jersey in a Class C motorhome that had some renovations done, and they're gonna give us a tour. So join us. Hey guys, thanks for having us on the show. My name is Paul and this is my wife Tish. We're here in New Jersey where I was born and raised. We live in San Diego and in San Diego we restore, renovate RVs. And this is a Class C motorhome that is one of my customers that actually allowed us to borrow his RV for the summer. So we wanted to show you guys a little bit about how we do it. We've traveled extensively in all types of campers, vintage versus modern. And this one suits our trip for this particular moment. So out here we kind of have our front porch. This is my parents' house, so they've got to deal with us. But we, um, we've got some tunes out here. We can set the scene a little bit. Uh, we'll sit under the awning, get out of the bright sun, the New Jersey heat. We keep this front cover on the, uh, the front of the chassis here to keep the sun out and keep the privacy from the neighbors. Uh, we've got the V10 E450 Super Duty Ford in here. The total length of the motorhome is 24 feet, so it is bigger than we're used to, but uh, the purpose of this particular motorhome journey is to be here at my parents' house and not constantly traveling, so we sort of needed a home. So come on inside and I'll show you our home. So you'll see here, it's a little bit more modernized. They were very interested in taking their old motorhome and making it feel a little new, a little more bright, and giving it kind of that white, homey feeling that they wanted to do. So I kind of coached them. I didn't build this motorhome out or renovate this motorhome out. I coached them along as they could um, take it on as like a project that they could do together. And so um, we did some vinyl flooring with the adhesive on it. It's kind of coming apart a little bit, um, but it does have that white um, brightness to it. This is a uh, vinyl adhesive flooring that I would not really recommend if you're gonna use it at the beach and have a lot of water, sand, heat, stuff like that. It kind of comes apart a little bit, but it doesn't bother much. Uh, we also have a area up front here that allows my two kids to happily sleep uh, on the top. Um, they've got a little divider to keep them away from each other. Um, and then you can remove this here to give yourself a little more headroom for getting in and out of the, the cab driver's cockpit area where we usually are sitting. We've got kind of a little drunk drawer that, I, that I've that i got. actually took it out of my Sprinter van that we have and it just allows us to keep all of our chargers and our junk and our guide to New England uh, book. Over here we have a little seat where you can sit. This is my kids love sitting here when they drive. There is a seat belt. Uh, they can sit here and engage with us, also see around the vehicle, see out the windows. We've got two seat belts here on the dinette. This also becomes a bed, but we don't need to use it as a bed. It's really nice to keep it as a dinette. That way we always have a place to sit, conversate, have meals, do puzzles, art, whatever it might be. Um, this is a pop out. So this whole area is actually on a motor and it pops out when we're, when we're stopped. And then we push the button and this whole wall comes in. It comes into about here. So you've still got plenty of room to walk around and plenty of headroom, um, which I really like. A lot of motor campers, you're kind of hunched in, but this is a really open, taller, you know, full size, we consider it a home. Uh, we've got a rooftop air conditioner. This is a, um, this ha you have to be plugged in or running the generator in order to make this work. Uh, this will not work while you're driving. This will not work if you don't have an electrical outlet plugged in and it will not work if you don't have the generator going. Um, so my wife Tish is gonna show you a little bit about our kitchen area and our fridge and how that all works. Yeah, so most of my duties are keeping the family fed and things kind of tidy. Uh, we do have the double sink. Usually I use one for drying dishes. Um, there's a good amount of water uh, storage, but you still have to use it kind of sparingly. Um, we got awesome uh, storage space here. We usually keep, when we do travel, we actually put a rubber band bungee cord on here because there is a lot of shifting and moving, so that prevents things from falling out. Uh, we do have a stove and oven top, which is great. Runs off propane, so there's four burners, actually three burners, so you can do a lot of things at once. We got a fan and a light. 
The microwave uh, will only run off when we're connected to power or the generator's on. So we actually don't really use it. We just use it to store bread and extra things. I like to keep all of our chips up top. Um, and then Paul built these actually really great slider drawers for all of our other goods here. So this is our connect, our, all of our controls here. Um, you can basically check your galley, all of your gray water, whatnot, by just pushing each button to kind of see where you're at with your levels. Um, and then my favorite feature of this camper, we've never had a large fridge with a freezer before. So this is great having all this additional space we can have popsicles and ice cubes um, and it runs off propane and then if we're plugged in you know we'll, we'll switch it to electric so it can run off that this is kind of like i said our dinette and we have some lower storage here this is uh, easy access for the kids a lot of books coloring books travel books um, you know ways we enjoy reading travel and adventures while we're on our travel and adventures um, another storage over here and then we use this uh, Ninja Bat, which is a battery, which allows us to charge all of our USB devices. Um, this is a 2006 motorhome, so it doesn't come with USB ports all over it. Um, so we just use this battery pack, which charges off solar if you put it outside or it charges off the um, electrical outlet. And so we just keep that charge. It runs great. And um, up here uh, where my kids sleep, we use, they have their own nightlight. Um, we use cross ventilation. They can open both of these screens or shut the curtains if the sun is too hot. Um, they can, we have a TV up here that we replaced the original TV and put a little flat screen in, but we've never used it. <laughs> we kind of um, don't spend much time on the TV when we're traveling. So uh, I guess if it rained for a while, we'd watch TV. We can also watch DVDs and um, we also have a, a power converter here inverter that allows us to um, turn that on and we can power the television utilizing the battery that is in the, the vehicle that allows us to use smaller uh, electronics it can't run the, the microwave or the air conditioner but this will allow us to plug in our laptop run a small television um, maybe a magic bullet anything small um, a lot of things and when you're traveling in motorhomes and camper vans ventilation air uh, things like that really help comfort the vehicle so we use the blinds if the sun's really strong keep the heat out we open all the windows for cross ventilation uh, or we shut all the windows and we turn the air conditioner on so it depends on where the sun is and where we are especially in new jersey with the humidity we, uh, we definitely focus on keeping the, vi the van or the RV cool. Down here is how we turn on our generator. The generator runs off the gasoline that's in the uh, engine of the vehicle, the fuel tank. So that's what starts it. We have a hot water heater if we want to uh, heat up our kitchen water, our shower, our outside shower. Um, we have a nice little um, extension on the sink that we've noticed is very handy. It's small enough to be able to fit outside, but you can also have things on here that you're using while you're outside, if you're cooking outside. Um, it really adds extra space to, you know, utilize the kitchen better. Over here is where we kind of keep our extra shoes. You know, shoes and camping and traveling are always like, what do we do with all our shoes? So we use like our, our outdoor kind of hiking trails type shoes up here, kind of hidden away. Um, just our rain jackets and our first aid kit up here. And then this is kind of my, my closet and my son's closet. We don't have much, uh, but you'll see it's organized, it's packed. All my t-shirts and all my swim shorts are here. Uh, then my next youngest son, since he's taller, gets the second drawer. He's got his clothes here. And then my youngest son gets his clothes uh, right here. And so we all kind of packed accordingly to, we knew we would be in hot New Jersey summer, mostly just shorts and t-shirts. And so kind of different than some of our other adventures where we've had to pack for all sorts of conditions. And then the final drawer down here is our pet drawer and it has various pet items we have a cat with us you can follow dude my cat on instagram uh he's with us now and our dog Kalei, um she actually passed away on this trip she was 14 but she traveled thoroughly with us for all 14 years of her life and so um she will be missed but she uh her time had come and, and we were very very happy that um she was able to make it here uh with us so coming back into here is our bathroom. This is a huge aspect of being able to live comfortably 
for a long period of time. We have a uh, heated shower in here. It's kind of messy now, but we also have mostly our cat uh, litter box. And so we don't really use the shower here because my parents have an outside shower. Um, and that's how we kind of get through the summer. Our toilet uh, has a has a black water tank and our sink is where the kids, you know, brush their teeth. We all um, have our, our pantry items in here and uh, keep keep ourselves um, comfortable with this with this bathroom here. Some storage alongside here, which is towels and bathroom type items um, and a light for inside the shower. Uh, we also have a vent, uh, which allows the uh, air to circu circulate in the, in the bathroom itself, um, which is really nice. Uh, as you can see the door, I put a little magnet on here. You learn all these little tricks, uh, but uh, this is just the magnet to keep the door open. Um, we have a heat. If it were to be cold out, we have a heat on a thermostat in here, which will blow hot air, which we definitely have not used on this trip. And then down here, you'll see our fuse panel. Uh, this is for our bigger items, and these are for our 12 volt items. And this will also allow the battery uh, to get charged, the camper batteries to get charged while we're plugged in. Up here, we have a double bed, pretty standard. Most RVs have this size bed where my wife and I sleep. Um, we have uh, up, upper vents uh, here. I would recommend, if I could do it again, a fan up here. It's nice to get that circula circulation. This doesn't have that, um, but it suits us well enough. Up here is kind of my wife's walk-in closet. She keeps her clothes up here and all these cabinets. Um, kind of has to dance around on the bed to get her, get her items out, but so be it. This is... Um, as you can see here, we have, this is for our heat. So I turn that on, this would turn our heater on. You can kind of hear it, but anyway, that's the heat. Um, I keep a baseball bat handy, just in case there's any uh, problems with anybody. Uh, sleep with a baseball bat. Actually, my kids play Little League, but. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a quick look at our motorhome. I'll take you guys on a little outside tour. All right, so as we sit out here on our porch, um, we can listen to music. We have an outdoor stereo, plugs our phone in. Um, we have an outlet if we wanted to plug in any kind of TV or something. Uh, the people actually that do own this motor home uh, that, that let me uh, build it and borrow it and the great friends of ours give them props, but they plug in a, a television out here and watch football games and stuff at, at the beach in, in California where this van lives. Um, this is our screened in door. So our door sits like this. We do have a cat, so we push this down and it prevents this from sliding open. It's kind of our little trick, but uh, you slide this open, you can get your hand in and out of there. And that's usually how it goes in the New Jersey. Mosquitoes don't get us. We don't have mosquitoes in San Diego, so we're, we're kind of new at the, the mosquito thing. Um, and then the door can be shut. But then if you're getting any sort of breeze, we have a little latch on it right here, which allows the door to kind of latch open and stay, stay open there. Um, so um, when we're driving, we put away our step. And when we're driving, we put the step down, allows us to get into the vehicle. Um, down here, all of our um, cabinets all open up. This is our two batteries that run our um, inside camping equipment. Anything that's on the 12 volt runs off these two batteries and those batteries do get charged as we're plugged in here at the house. Um, we have some, uh, we have dually tires here, brand new tires before we got on the road. We always, uh, tire safety is crucial. Um, these are cool little valves and they are green when they're full. I think they're on 80 PSIs. And so these are a cool little trick. We actually got a flat tire in Kansas on our way over here pulled into a tire shop. I told the dude, how do you know if I have enough air? I can't, I couldn't tell that I had a flat because this is a dually. And he said, well, it's always hard to tell, but I do have these little valves they are 10 bucks and you, for all of them and you can twist them on. And if you ever see red, like as you can see, this one has a little bit of red. That way I know that this tire is a little low on air and might want to bring it back up. So as we come around here, um, this is our, this is our heater. Um, this is our hot water heater actually. And uh, this will heat up our hot water using propane, but we, we haven't really had to use that at, at all. Um, then down here, I, I uh, keep kind of like uh, quick use tools like our bike pump, 
um, our baseball stuff. We've got a couple little solar lights for setting the scene up when we're camping. Miscellaneous little, I have an extra uh, heat adapter in case we need to plug in somewhere that doesn't have the right connector. Um, I've got the surfboard ding repair, you know, just items that you might want to get to while you're at camp. I don't like to keep items too tucked away. This is kind of our, I call this the fun bin. <laughs> so my kids are like, where's my helmet? Where's my skateboard? This is the fun bin. So anything that's fun is in here. So if it's a quick grab, it's a, it's a beach ball, it's a skateboard, you know, it's whatever. Um, whatever things we're using often, they just chuck them in here. And that's uh, kind of the fun bin. These are leveling jacks. Um, the owners of this are from Hawaii, so they have their bumper sticker here. But uh, but this these leveling jacks, they're like Legos. You can put them down on the ground and you can Lego them together and drive your vehicle up on here and the tire sits on there, which makes the vehicle level. Fortunately, my parents' house is already graded and level, but we'll run into campsites sometimes and it's, um, you know, these come in handy. These aren't the brand I recommend, but these are the ones I had laying around. Um, we have a ladder uh, for going on the roof. I actually hang our chairs on this little chair hanger and I strap them onto the ladder. Um, we don't go on the roof too much, but I do go up there and inspect it. We get weather. I like to check, make sure everything's not leaking. Everything looks really good up there. I always start with the top of a motorhome when I'm inspecting it. Always check for leaks. Make sure you've got good seals around the window vents. And then moving on to here, uh, this is our bike rack. And this bike rack, we put four of our, our bikes on the back of here and drive along with that. So we've got airbags here. So this vehicle has um, a couple little airbags that we can fill up. We run them at about, uh, I think we're running about 70 or 80 PSI, depending on how much water we have on board. And then we've got a little light switch here, lights up back here, allows us at nighttime, we can take the bikes off or we can, you know, check what's going on back here with our pressure and make sure we're all good to go. Inside here is where we hide our tank, our, our water, our black water and gray water tank um, hose. This is our power cord. We've got a, a garden hose here for filling up with water. And um, this is our outside shower. Um, we use this a lot just to rinse off the kids uh, after the, the long day at the campground or something. But uh, since we're stayed put right now, um, it's not often that we use this, but when we are on the road traveling, we always use the outside shower. Um, here is where we fill up. We don't use the city water connection, but if you had a hose, you could connect it to here and have water constantly flowing into the vehicle. Um, if you do that, it's good to have your hose connected for the outflow too, so you don't overfill the system. And then this one is where we connect the garden hose onto. Um, we would put the hose right onto here uh, fill, fill this up with water and that will fill the tanks that are located underneath the vehicle that gives us our daily day-to-day -day water. Underneath here, uh, we have the drain. Uh, I pull this lever here and it will bring the black water, which is our toilet waste, into this hose and drain it out. And then over here, we have this is our shower water, our sink water, and that will combine into this and it will all flow out the same, um, same hose when we're connected to a hole in the ground at a campground. Uh, you can see here, as we move on to this side, this is actually the pop-out. This is the back of the refrigerator here, access if you need to repair the fridge. Some vents for the back of the fridge, but this is the whole unit that you saw we talked about earlier with our pop-out. This is the actual pop-out. So I would never drive like this, um, but when we are camping, this is what this is as far as it comes out. And I'll tell you what, this amount of space is amazingly a lot. You would never expect this much space to really count, but with the pop out, um, it's a game changer. Down here is kind of a zone that I don't really, we'll start over here. Um, this is our generator. Um, it's pretty quiet. It, it runs off, like I said, it runs off the tank, the gas tank of the fuel tank for the vehicle, runs our generator, um, and that allows us to use, if we wanted to use the microwave, um, we could use it while this is running, or we could charge the batteries with this running or we could uh, use our air conditioner. So a couple times traveling across the country, uh, we stayed at uh, like a rest area one night and we turned, turned on the generator. We were, allowed to, we were able to run our air conditioning. Um, this final hatch over here, and you know, all these hatches are, they're all up to you. You can, you can do with them what you want. You can put what you want in them. For me, um, for me, it's, it's uh, 
never really a useful, it's too awkward to come over here and use it. So I tuck away a lot of my tools, you know, things I might use on the road um, that are that are kind of, you know, safety, safety hazard things, jumper cables, uh, my lug wrench, duct tape, always have duct tape with you. And um, this kind of hideaway stash zone for just my, my tools for, for road life. Thank you very much for taking the time to give us a tour of this beautiful Class C motorhome that you're traveling in. How did you get involved in renovating campers? Tell us the story about that. Uh, oof, I, I've always had a van. Uh, my first car when I was 17 here on the Jersey Shore was a 1977 green Westphalia full camper. I bought it from a deadhead. It had been on dead tour for 14 years. The van went to Guatemala. Unique part of the story is that um, my mom worked in the Jersey Shore Hospital with another lady. They were simply talking about vans and how much their son traveled in vans. And she said, my husband had a van for 14 years. We drove all the way to Guatemala. And my mom said, I think my son's van was in Guatemala. And it turns out that I had that same van. So it was a unique story. But the next level is how did we get into campers is uh, we met in college in Hawaii. And uh, you want to tell them how that went? Oh, well, my very first car was a Volkswagen bus as well. My dad surprised me on my 16th birthday. Pretty cool dad. Um, so yeah, I was just in the, the bar actually <laughs> talking about Volkswagen buses with him. And then, you know, 25 love, years ago from there. Yeah. yeah. So, she, you know, hers caught on fire while she was driving it, uh, but it was yeah. all all good and safe. But yeah, we, we went on, extinguisher. we all went on to, um, we went on to travel a lot. We traveled, we lived in Alaska and Tahoe and Hawaii and we just always bought, we went to Europe. We always just buy a van and, and I just kind of knew how to fix vans, knew our way around vans. We've always had vans as our vehicle of choice. And um, I don't know, after after always having a van and building up vans, Volkswagen buses where I had so many, I've had 15 BW buses probably at least, all kinds of models and shapes and sizes. And I've even been to Wolfsburg, Germany, uh, just kind of got addicted to Volkswagens. And then as the Sprinter started to come along and we had a Toyota Sun Raider and we've had all kinds of stuff, but um, I was in the beer industry for 14 years or in 12 years in San Diego, craft beer kind of was coming up there and, and I was in that. We always had a camper and then um, people would always want to buy my camper. And so I sold them my camper and um, you know, did carpentry and construction on the side also as a younger kid to be able to travel and and just took what I knew about experience of being on the road and traveling and then put it to work with what I do with my talents as a carpenter and a builder and it kind of merged these two lifestyle choices that I'd had and it made it into one thing and it was a sure fit. So I left the beer industry and started building campers and restoring campers as a passion project turning into a full-time career. So. Um, my business is called Freedom Vessel, freedomvessel.com, Freedom Vessel YouTube. Uh, you can hashtag Freedom Vessel. And um, so now we live in San Diego where I restore and renovate and build campers and, and mostly for families. Our kids are in the local school system. Most families and friends see our camper. We have a converted Sprinter uh, that you can see on our channel. And um, people have always just said, man, you guys do so much. How do you do it? How do you afford to do it? How do you, you know, how do you turn the hot water on? How do you, you know, all these questions. And so we kind of act as like sort of consultants or tutors and we teach people how to, and then when they want one, I'll build it for them. And, and that's kind of how, how it's all unfolded, I think. Can you tell us, uh, if they go online and they put the hashtag in Freedom Vessel, it's gonna come up with uh, a lot of images of a vintage, uh, like Class C or Class B motorhome. Yeah, so um, there's one particular motorhome that uh, after having 15 Volkswagens and after having, you know, Sun Raiders and having sailboats and having all types of surfboards. I've been a surfer my whole life, um, had a Hobie Cat. Uh, I got into fiberglass shell motorhomes, so I, I really enjoyed. She's part of the fiberglass motorhome club and we just love fiberglass motorhomes they don't leak they're lightweight they, they you know the scamps and the um what sun else raiders. Is the sun raiders and stuff Florida. like that and so uh working with fiberglass is, is something that i always kind of enjoyed and so we have one particular motorhome that we own uh it's called a balboa motorhome and they were made for about four years in southern california and it is a small 18 foot fiberglass motorhome it's a 1972 Chevy that we own, that we use for beach trips and local traveling around Southern California. And so the Balboa Motorhome is something that I've pursued and, and have since restored about 14 of them. 
Uh, I think there's only about a 150 still out there and and I think I'm sort of the resident guru on Balboa Motorhomes. Uh, promoted them a little bit, got a bunch of people in my neighborhood with them and, and now it's become a, a fun little uh, community effort here. We have about 10 uh, Balboa Motorhomes in Southern California. We all go to the beach and camp and um, I do have one coming for sale in August. So uh, stay tuned onto my Instagram and, and have the chance to own one of those one of those classic rare vintage motorhomes. So that, I mean, that's, that's a good story because you know, you fall in love with a certain product or brand and you gain a following with that and then people latch on and they want one just like it. That's exactly what happened with my Airstream B190. You know, they've been around for a very long time and, you know, I took mine and renovated it and put four wheel drive on it. A lot of people saw that and liked it. Now they're building one just like it. So it's pretty cool that, you know, they took an older 24 year old motorhome and refreshed it. And that's what you basically yeah, did with that motorhome. Yeah, it's also, you know, uh, in, in it's just nice to see things that were made uh, or that were that were old that have been refurbished and given a second chance and given a new life and and so many of these things got kind of tucked into the side yard or into somebody's backyard and were were just forgotten about and now to revive them and see them out on the streets and driving around and people having fun in them and making memories in them and and they're kind of like a resurgence of these classic cool you useful tools to adventure and so yeah like you said um, it's not that they're not you won't ever see a commercial on tv or you won't ever see a you know a, a blimp go by that says you know vintage motorhome or whatever so you kind of sniff around and you look and see what people have and once you see one that that fits you then you start to kind of dive into the research and figure out how do i get one of those you know and so i could see that with yours I, i'm already wondering where i can get one <laughs> Well, thank you for taking the time out of your busy vacation here in the Jersey Shore to give us a tour of the motorhome you're currently traveling in. I'm sure our viewers are going to love to follow your journeys and your builds. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, and subscribe. I love it. We'll see you soon.